else. If you're done with everything else um, in all classes and everything else is in good standing, then take those exams, okay? Now, if you take them and you do crummy, I will not count them against you either. All right, that's what I mean by optional. If you take them and they help your target scores, though, I will use them. So we'll just save those, though, for two weeks from now. That's week 18. This week is week 16. This will be our last Tuesday class. Tomorrow will be our last Wednesday class. Next week will be a catch-up week. And then 18 will be exams for y'all, okay? If you choose to take them again, exams are optional. And that is in the announcements as well as that important information that I sent you. So with that being said, let's get into the very last section and unit of material. We're just going to do the basics of it um, and start with just some vocabulary. What do we have for vocabulary? So that first one says if a point, so all, this is all information on segments and distances and parts of triangles for measurements. Um, given different different things like perpendicular bisectors and medians and all that good stuff. So if you were able to watch that recording, you saw that. If not, we are going to go through some more of that right now. So we see a lot of new words here. So let's look. So it says if a point, so that first one, if a point is the same distance from two or more objects. The point is equidistant or equally, I always think equidistant is like equally distant from those two objects, right? So what that looks like is if a point is the same distance from two objects, so object A is here, object B is here. If my point is the same distance from here as this from here, this point is equally distant from the objects. This point is equally distant from here as it is from here. It's equidistant. So that's what that word is. So what about the next one? Now let's just do these in the chat if you if you know them. Um, we'll quickly go through this warm up and then we'll get into the problems. The circumcenter, the circumcenter of a triangle. The circumcenter of a triangle is equally distant from what of the triangle? Anyone remember that? The circumcenter. Okay, again, these are just just big definitions that we learned this week. Uh, close. The circumcenter is equally distant from, so if I have a triangle, the circumcenter is actually, the circumcenter that I just drew, actually I'll make it in black so we can see it. The circumcenter in black is equally distant from, it's actually the three vertex points. So the three vertices. So circumcenter means that all the lengths to each of the vertex points is the same. So what about when we have three or more lines? When three or more lines do what at one point? The lines are said to be concurrent. What basically this is just saying, what is the definition of concurrence? Again, just making sure we are aware of what some of these words mean because they are new to us, but they're similar to words we already know. Not sure. So you guys, intersecting is just, it, we use the word intersect usually with two lines, and then when we have three or more, we call them concurrent. So intersecting is really the same as being concurrent. When, where things cross, intersect, are concurrent, those all mean the same thing. All right, last one in this little section. What of the triangle is the point where the three perpendicular bisectors of a triangle are concurrent or intersect? What is the point on the triangle called where the three perpendicular bisectors cross? It's one we already talked about. So we've got these two going on together. Okay, before we just look at those last three in terms of definition, do we have any questions about those top ones? 
again, concurrent really just means where three or more lines intersect, where they cross each other. That circumcenter is the point that we get to where all of the lines from each vertex point is equal. Not seeing anything in the chat, so let's move on just to a couple more definitions. So what about a median? It says the median of a triangle is a segment. So the median of a triangle is a segment whose endpoints are the vertex of the triangle and the what of the opposite side. So if I have a triangle, it says a median is a segment whose endpoints, love it, Joe, yes. It is, that's correct. It's the midpoint, perfect. Whose endpoints are the vertex Right, so it could be these are the vertices, vertices or vertex points. And it's the midpoint of the opposite side. So uh, we pick one of those vertices. And then the other one is the midpoint of the opposite side. Right, so the middle of basically the middle of one line up to the opposite vertex. What about the centroid? New word, the last two are new words, centroid and orthocenter. So the centroid of a circle is the point where the three medians cross. So right, if I did this, this and this. Our point where those all cross is the centroid. And then the orthocenter is where the three heights or the three altitudes. So the difference between medians and altitudes, the altitudes create a 90 degree angle, whereas the, the centroid and the medians that create or connect that centroid don't always form that 90 degree angle. So that might help just in case you have a question where you're not sure what the word means, but really the big ones here that we really, really, really want to focus on is, and, and more of this is just the basics, what these mean. So can we identify and use some of these properties? Can we identify and use some of these properties? So looking at this one, this is like question one and two. So we're going to identify points that are equally distanced from vertices. Okay, we're going to use coordinates and bisectors Per both perpendicular and angle bisectors and other length and angle measure properties, okay, including medians, altitudes, mid segments, and we're going to be able to find those. So we've got a lot encompassed in here, but very basic stuff, the basics of it. We're not getting into the deep nitty gritty. We're just going to go over kind of some of the basic terminology, identifying and using some of those properties in general, just very basically. So let's look at mid segments. What about this one? Y'all remember the triangle mid segment theorem? So any questions about what rule we're using here? And again, a lot of the assignment problems that you have this week are just identifying what's what, which is what we have on here. Again, this is like questions one and two that you will see this week. There are 10 multiple choices. I see a couple people trying theirs on Desmos. Okay, so let's go through that first one. So it says we're given the triangle ABC. What is a mid segment of that triangle? Okay, so if we have a base, the mid segment is going to be a couple things. It's going to be parallel to that base, right? 
And it's only going to work if it cuts those two sides in half. So the end point is here. If it cuts that length into two equal parts, and this end point cuts the opposite side into two equal parts, then it creates a mid-segment. So DE on this one is our mid-segment. So what's a segment that's parallel to AC? So we're looking at AC, and I think I kind of just mention that in some of our definition, but the one parallel, if you all want to fill it out on Desmos, awesome. We only have a couple people on there. Those of you that are on there, though, got it. Are the rest of us just sleepy or not sure? We're doing it in our, our brains and then checking your answers once we go through them. I'm going to take it as y'all are sleepy. <laughs> the one that's parallel is the mid-segment. So again, DE, segment DE is going to be parallel to the base. Okay. Oh, thanks, Imogen. I was like, crickets, chirp, chirp. <laughs> okay, what about the next one? A segment that has this length as BD. So here is B, D. Based on tick marks, we can find one that is the same. And that's right here, D, A. So hopefully D, A was the one you wrote, or A, D, either one works. So what about the segment that's half of A, C? So again, I'm going to kind of do this. Which segment is half the length of this base one? So in other words, if this was 10, which segment length is 5? And hopefully you all said DE again. So that's our really our rule there. As long as the two remaining sides. OK, so I've got a base. Let's start. So just as a recap. I've got a base of a triangle. I can pick any side I want, right? If the two remaining sides here and here are cut into equal parts, so they are, the line that cuts those into the two equal parts is the mid-segment. So what we know about the mid-segment is this. We know it's parallel to its base, and we also know that the mid-segment is half of the base. So, for example, if the base was 10, its mid-segment was 5. It's half of that. All right, so with that being said, any questions on the mid-segment? The mid-segment is just going to be dealt with in questions 1 and 2 this week. We're feeling really good on those. Okay, then let's take a look at... The in center, some rules for the in center. Oops, was there a question here? We're all good. Okay. Thanks, Eric. Okay, what about this in center? It kind of gives you the definition down here. It says the angle bisectors of a triangle intersect at a point. So the angle bisectors intersect at a point that's equally distant from the sides of the triangle. I'm going to change this, actually. I don't like the way that's worded. Let's do that. So right off the bat, it says H, J, K, H, J, K. This angle right here. Again, I outlined it to know which angle they were talking about. Start at the H, go down to the J, Go up to the K. The angle created, whoopsies, is HJK. And because that would be the bisector where they meet, 45 here means it's 45 here. So they did that first one for us. Can we do the next couple? JHK. So we've got J, H, K. So I'm looking for this one. For number four, then it's asking for H, J, I. So from H to J to I. So this whole thing right here 
is what this question is asking for. We found the little part, the top part of that one. We know the bottom part of that is 45 for a total of. And then it's asking also what the distance is from point K to angle J. So this kind of color coded them for us. So a quick look on Desmos. Let's see where we are at on those. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Joe, looking good. Eric, take a look at the whole thing, H-J-I, not H-J-K. Yeah. So since, and let's go back and color code these appropriately. So since this is the bisector, right? Whoopsies. If one part's 30, the other part is also 30. We already said that this little guy in here was 45. So a 45 and a 45 together to create that whole huge one is 90. And then what's the distance? Looking at our definition, it says they're equally distant from the sides. So hopefully y'all said, since this was 25 here, this here was also going to be 25. So again, the definition of that in center is just when we have angle bisectors that intersect at a point and it's going to be equally distant, that point's going to be equally distant from the sides of the triangle that form that 90. All right, so with that being said, questions, questions, questions. And three and seven on our assessment are pretty similar to that. I think one of them just literally asks which of these angles is the angle bisector. So the one that you see has the angle split into equal parts. Bisects means cut in half. Try to keep it a little more basic on this one, again, just so we are aware of what some of these rules and words are and mean. Okay, just question four deals with the circumcenter. Just question four deals with the circumcenter. Here's some just some more rules and properties to deal with. Okay, but if we have perpendicular bisectors, which notice they are because they have the 90 degree angle here. So we've got perpendicular bisectors on each side of the triangle. They all intersect or cross at a point. They all cross at a point that is equidistant or the same distance from all of the vertices. So what that's saying is, since we have those perpendicular bisectors, this point is the same distance from here as it, it is to here as it is to here, not just all the lines drawn out, all of the from the center to each vertex point. So knowing that, we want to know, well, what's AG? Oh, well, if GC is H, then AG is also H. What about DB? The next one's asking for D, B. What's that one? Again, note that this one's saying this is a perpendicular bisector. This is a perpendicular. Bisect means it cuts it in half. So we know that DB is also seven, right? What about AF? Let's go a different color here. A to F, from here to here. Again, we have this perpendicular bisector. So if we know the other part of that line, you know this part of the line, it's also 7.4. It bisects, cuts that line in half. Not only is it perpendicular, but it cuts it in half. And then the last one is GB. So this one was a little tricky, but not hopefully not after I drew it in there. What do we know about the lengths from the center out to each vertex? They're all the same. So really that's all that's looking for, for question number four. All right, so finishing this out then, 
Again, if you need to go back and review any of these definitions, um, look at any of these examples. This is recorded. It'll post in about an hour. Five, six, eight, nine, and ten all deal with this idea of the centroid. So all a centroid is, is it's two-thirds of the distance from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So here's what that looks like. Okay, if I have a midpoint and a vertex to the opposite side. Basically what this all this is saying is the distance from here to here is two thirds of the whole thing. The distance from here to here is just one third of the whole thing because two thirds and a third make up the, the whole distance. So again, from the vertex to the center is the bigger piece. From the center to the midpoint is the smaller piece. So a line that basically goes through that middle of that circle, two thirds of that length is of that whole line is going to be the top piece or the piece connected to the vertex. So the vertex, oops, again, the, oopsies, here we go. The vertex to our centroid is two thirds of this whole line. From the vertex to the center, that's two thirds of this whole line. And from this vertex to the center, that's two thirds of this whole line. That's all this right here is saying. So from a vertex to the midpoint, the vertex to the center is two thirds of the line. The center to the midpoint is one third of the line. So knowing that, what's RV? Well, let's fill out what we know so far. It tells us that RS, this whole shebang, is 21. It also tells us that VT, this little guy in here, is 5. So knowing that, what's RV? What's just RV? So if I know the whole thing is 21, what's 2 thirds of that, right? Center to the vertex. If I know the whole length is 21, I want to know what the 2 thirds of that is. For those of us that kind of like it written out, it's two thirds of our line. So basically what's two thirds of 21? If I split that up into three, two of those three pieces are four, two thirds of 21. Each piece is seven, right? Seven, 14, 21. So two of those three would be 14. So then what's SV? Whoopsies. What's SV? SV is the center to the midpoint. So that's only one third of it. One third of 21. So in other words, one third of the line or one third of 21 is just seven, right? The seven and the 14 together give us our whole length of 21. Try that last one really quickly. We know TV is five, so we want to find TP, the whole length, and VP, the bigger piece. So five is the smaller piece of that line. That's one third of the line. We need to find the whole line and the two thirds of that line. So again, think of it this way. My triangle down here. Here's the midpoint, here's the vertex, here's the center. We know that this is two thirds of the whole line. We know that this is one third of the whole line. If we know one third of the line is five, then what are two thirds of the line? So another one third and another one third would be 10. 
And then what's the whole line? If we have a 10 and a 5, the whole line is 15. So T, P, the whole line here is 15. But P, V, or V, P, two-thirds of the line would be 10. So five and six literally, literally are saying which point is a midpoint, which point is the centroid, which line is a, I'm sorry, which line has a midpoint, things like that, just very basic. And then eight, nine, and 10 are asking you to do the calculations like these. So finding the one third part or the two thirds parts or the whole length given part of that. So with that being said, folks, that is what we have this week. That is our week 16, last assignment of the semester. So if you need some extra help, I'm going to stick around for the next five minutes to answer any questions you may have right off the bat for this or anything else. And then don't forget, last help session of the semester is tomorrow.